Hi, welcome to Feel the Boot. I'm Lance, and I give companies a lot of advice on a lot of different topics. But sometimes a founder will ask me, what's the number one piece of advice I'd like to give them? And I always say the same thing, stay due diligence ready. Feel the Boot is devoted to providing advice to startups and founders. If that's you, I hope you find this helpful. If you know someone else who needs that kind of help, I hope you'll share it with them. I provide a lot of face-to-face -face advice, but that doesn't scale well, and that's why I started this YouTube channel. The reason my number one piece of advice is to stay due diligence ready really comes out of my own personal scar tissue. I remember early in the days of Anonymizer, I was approached by a company that wanted to acquire us. It came out of the blue, and it came at a time when we really, really needed it. But they needed to go through due diligence on us, and we were not ready. And I have never worked so hard for so long in my entire life. It was a death march getting through this, trying to find all the information that had gone missing, chasing down people who didn't work for me anymore to get things signed to make sure that I dotted all my I's and crossed all my T's. It was completely ridiculous, and the amount of pain was off the charts, and it simply didn't have to be. In fact, that deal never did happen, but I kept the company due diligence ready from then on, and when we finally did sell, we were ready. It was not a huge amount of work to get everything together and provide the information to the acquirer because we've been keeping it together the whole time. Now, as I started thinking through this episode, I realized that things were quickly getting out of control. The number of things to keep track of, to stay due diligence ready, got completely out of control. If I try to cover all of them in this video, this will be a monster. So if you want all the details, you're gonna to wanna to go to the blog, but here I'm gonna hit on the high points. The real punchline here is it's much easier to stay due diligence ready than it is to get due diligence ready. It's all about having your ducks in a row, making sure you have all of the information that anyone doing due diligence might wanna have at your fingertips. Putting together a system that makes sure that it's organized, that you can find everything, that you have records of all of that information, and have put in place processes to make sure that you're keeping up with all of that information. And then when someone asks, you just have to hand it over. It's already right there, as opposed to trying to pull it together from thousands of different folders and files and archives and backups and wherever else it may have disappeared to. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have really carefully documented is investors and equity. So anyone who has bought stock, anyone who's been issued founder shares, anyone who's got options from your options plan, or people who have convertible debt, people who've given you investments through a convertible note or maybe a safe. Another key category of information is human resources stuff. Everything about everyone who works in the company. Foremost of this is employment agreements, and they are incredibly important. You wanna make sure that you always have employment agreements with everyone who's working with you. If you're working with a contractor, you need a formal contracting arrangement with them. Along with all those employment agreements, you need to make sure that you have intellectual property agreements nailed down as well. So anyone who's been involved in any way with your company, particularly involved in developing your solutions, needs to have signed an intellectual property assignment. It has to be crystal clear that you actually own everything that you're using to run the company. And while we're talking about intellectual property, you wanna document that. Any trade secrets that you've created, any intellectual property that you've developed that you need to protect, any copyrights, trademarks, patents, make sure that you've got all of those easily to hand so when someone asks you what is the intellectual property in the company, you can tell them quickly. Contracts are probably the biggest problem I ran into because every material contract, anything more than just a trivial transaction, you're gonna to need to have the actual contract saved somewhere that you can find it and go refer to it and show it to your investors. So every hosting agreement, the domain names you're buying, uh, key software licenses, right? all of that stuff, and non-disclosure agreements. The next category is customers. It's important to know who your customers are. If they're B2B customers, you'll need to have the actual contracts with all of them to know exactly what are your commitments to all of those customers. What do you owe them? What are the de deliverables that are outstanding? 
If you have consumer customers, it's more important to have statistical information on them. How many, what's the growth rate, what's the retention rate, what's the average lifetime, all of that kind of data needs to be at your fingertips. Next is legal matters, starting with the corporate structure. You need to have all of your ducks in a row, certainly with the structure of your company. If you're a C-Corp, do you have the articles of incorporation and your bylaws? Have you been having all of the board meetings and shareholder meetings that you're supposed to, and you have good minutes on all of those. Anytime you're opening bank accounts, there need to be uh, motions from the board of directors capturing that. So it's all formalized and you can go back and demonstrate that yes, all of these actions were taken appropriately. One thing that you might not be thinking about is capturing all of your public facing data. So any press releases, any articles, any interviews, any PR that you're doing, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have records of so that you can show it to someone who's doing due diligence. This is effectively a brag sheet. It's really good for you to have because it makes you look good to them. So it won't necessarily be something that would make you fail a due diligence check, but it can certainly help support the valuation you're trying to achieve. Operations is another area that you want to make sure that you're documenting. So what are your policies and procedures? What kind of documentation are you putting out to your employees about how they do things? What are the privacy policies, the harassment policies? Those should exist and be in place and have evidence that people have seen them. Right? You want people to acknowledge that they have received those and that should be in your records. And then you want to document everything that you have, all your assets. You know, do you have leases on property? Are you renting furniture? Do you have physical assets that may be depreciating? And then of course there's IT assets. You've got computers and laptops and software and all the software licenses that are involved. Business information is another key area, particularly financial information, making sure that you've got all of your financial statements historically going back as far as the company's existed. Audited is great, but usually not necessary. And also any financial projections you're making. You're gonna to wanna to create some kind of a data room to hold all of this. Some place an investor who signed a non-disclosure agreement can go to see all of this information organized in one place. I'd encourage you to actually set that up far in advance because it's a great place for you to keep all this information. And if you set up processes to always update that every time a new contract comes in, every time you sign an NDA, every time you hire a new employee, you're going to update that folder. It automates the whole process and means that anytime you need to do that due diligence, it's all right there and you can with confidence just hand over the keys, give them a password and let them in. Because that's often the reality. We're thinking, ah, I'm gonna know a year in advance that I'm gonna need due diligence because I know when I need investment or I'm not planning on selling the company, but it's often the case that something comes up opportunistically. There's some company you want to acquire and you need to raise funds quickly, or you're burning through funds more quickly than you thought and you need to get a new round going right now. Or someone comes out of the blue and offers you more money than you ever thought you'd see and says, hey, we wanna buy your company, show us the stuff. And now you're scrambling, which is where we were. If we'd had everything in place, we could have just opened the doors and showed it to them. And that would have made things so much easier. So there's a lot of things to be keeping track of. The key is to start as early as possible so the pile that you need to work through is as small as possible. Maybe start chipping these things off one category at a time until you get everything up to speed. But make sure that once you get a category complete, it never backslides. Put those processes in as soon as you finish capturing things so you can put that one to bed and move on to that next category. Everyone who's doing due diligence wants something slightly different. So my list is not going to be the perfect list or utterly comprehensive. I encourage you to go out and look at some of the other publicly available due diligence checklists, which investors often use to see what other kinds of things people may be looking for and see if those are things you wanna start capturing now to be even more prepared. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you found it interesting and useful, and if so, please like and subscribe. Then click the bell icon to be notified each time new episodes become available. We upload new content every other week. And if this ever comes up for you, I'd love to hear how things went. Were you able to get your due diligence together so it wasn't some nightmare scenario? And if you know anyone else who's running a company, let them know. I really wanna help as many people as possible. Till next time, ciao.